Okay, this is Dr. Krause with some hopefully brief instructions on how to use the Arduino code that is being provided for the Root Locus uh, Control Design Lab for the DC motors. Uh, there are four main functions when you boot up the Arduino. Um, once you've uh, downloaded the, or uploaded the code, you should be greeted with an ASCII menu giving you four cases. The first one is to calibrate the inverse deadband. The second one runs an open loop pulse test. The third one runs a P control step response test. And the fourth one runs a PD control step response test. Um, the main idea is that after the test runs, or kind of as it's running, the data, if except in case one where there is no data, for two, three, and four, the data will be printed to the serial monitor, and then you can copy and paste that into a text editor or a spreadsheet program, and then graph the responses from there. Um, the very first thing you're going to want to do, though, with this code is to verify that all of the connections are correct. Um, you, If you've wired up your H-Bridge and encoder yourself, um, you may not have chosen the exact same pins that I chose. Uh, statistically, that's probably not likely. Um, so verify that those are all right, um, that you have the PWM and the enable pins to the uh, H bridges correct, that you have the A and B wires as well as the power wires to the encoder correct. Um, and the big idea is that a positive motor command signal must lead to positive increasing theta and the negative is also true that, the, that a negative motor command must lead to decreasing or negative theta um, if, if those are not correct then your motor is going to be unstable for all of the the closed loop tests that you run so it's, it's got to have positive voltage leading to positive changes in theta um, also, I'll get into this in the next slide, but I think your Arduino is going to get restarted a lot um, every time it, we make a new serial connection. And so having to rerun the calibration for the inverse dead man is going to get a little bit old. And so you may just want to pick some reasonable default values for your motor. Keep in mind those can vary based on the day, the temperature, how much the motor's been running. So you may want to periodically run um, the calibration test over but then put in new default values um, for the pause break and neg break. I think it's called. We'll look at that in just a second. Um, as I mentioned, every time we make a new serial connection, the Arduino is going to reboot, and so that's going to cause it to forget the calibration results. Um, along those lines, um, if 500 uh, lines of data print to the serial monitor, um, it's going to be painful to just, in my mind, with a mouse, go in and, and select those 500 rows to copy and paste them. So what I would do if I were doing that is to uh, open and close the serial monitor in between each test, and then everything that's in the monitor is from the current test, then I can just do like a control A, or if you're on a Mac, a command A. Although if you're on it, well, you don't have to use a serial monitor. If you have a Mac or Linux computer and know how to use Python, you can get the data to stream directly to Python, and then you can kind of avoid all of the copying and pasting completely. Um, for whatever reason, my students have not had as much luck with that in Windows. Um, so if that's not you, then you control A to select all the tests, copy, paste that into a text editor or a spreadsheet program or whatever, and then you can graph the data from there. Like I said, opening and closing the serial monitor reboots the Arduino, and that will undo your inverse deadband calibration. So, on to the demo. I assume that you have the code, that you've uploaded the code to the Arduino, and you're ready to go. Um, the first thing I would do, normally, you might want to come in here. So, a couple of things. So, one, if your serial monitor defaults to 9600 baud, that's just going to be way too slow for what we're trying to do. And the, the time that is spent printing the data to the serial monitor would just mess up all the tests. So 115, 200 is my favorite baud default. And it's also what's set up in the software. So that's where you need to be. Um, ordinarily, you might run the calibrate inverse dead band first. But the very first thing I want to do is verify the connections. And I've actually deliberately set these up to be wrong. So I'm going to run an open loop pulse test because I don't have calibrated inverse dead band. I'm going to give it a large amplitude. That amplitude is a 0 to 2, well, negative 255 to positive 255 PWM count. So I'm going to give it 200. And I'm going to tell it to stay on for 200 trips through the for loop. 
and it's going to run a test. And actually, that should be enough to tell you that there's a problem if you know what you're looking at. Um, if I scroll up, the columns are labeled as N. This is the number of times through the loop function. Uh, a DT, which should hopefully be 4 milliseconds, and I'm printing it out there to kind of verify that we're having the correct amount of weight in between each for loop, and that weight kind of adjusts itself, and I'll talk about that. And then this is the time in seconds. Hmm. Apparently I labeled that column wrong. It is the time in seconds. If every one of these is 4 milliseconds, then obviously this can't be 0.04 milliseconds. Um, so for example, by the time we get to 100 times 4 milliseconds, we get to 0.4 seconds. So that um, makes sense. I'll try to change that label. Then we have the theta desired, which would be zero in the open loop case, but it's whatever's the closed loop input uh, for the proportional and PD control. And then the theta coming off the encoder and the PWM. So the second to last column, so you notice we're just right here. We're sending a value of 200 to the PWM, and we're seeing theta start to decrease and go increasingly negative. And so it stops at negative 1500 after I gave it an amplitude of positive 200. So I have it backwards. Um, we'll talk about how to fix that in just a second. But let me plot this data. So I'm going to copy or control A, command A, command C, control C, whatever. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to find, um, so I'm going to call this bad ol data.csv. Paste that here. Now a couple of things. It's got some extra stuff at the end that I want to get rid of that's not my kind of plottable data. And if I go up to the beginning, I have some other stuff that's not plottable. And so I'm going to skip these four rows. Actually, they'll be skipped automatically for me in Python, but if you're using MATLAB, you would need to tell it to skip those four rows. Um, in Python, the pound sign is the comment signal and so the the load txt function knows to get rid of this so i just want to plot this data for you just so you know what to expect and so if i came over to here and ran that and had it grab that data there's my data and it has 500 rows and six columns i'm going to unpack that into the variables that i need um, you can see my DT is holding pretty steady around 4 milliseconds. My theta D is 0, which is irrelevant, but this is the main plot. And the main thing I want you to see, if we look at this closely, is that my PWM signal, I should have a legend and some axes and stuff, but the blue line is my PWM signal, and it jumps up to the positive 200 amplitude that I told it to use, and the whole time theta is decreasing. And so that's bad. Um, so there are a number of options for fixing that. Um, I could go in and physically move some wires around. There's like four or five different places where this could, could be fixed. I could change what the positive and negative wires are coming out of my H-bridge. I could change which is the channel A and channel B wires going into the encoder pins that on my board are two and three. Um, I could change which enable pins get set um, for the positive and negative values. But probably the easiest thing is to come down here to the do encoder function and just say, I want this to be negative or decrement, and I want this to be increment. Um, and if I do those things and then close the serial monitor and re-upload my code... reopen my serial monitor and rerun my open loop pulse test. I'm going to go with an amplitude of 200 again and a width of 200. It's going to stay on for 200 loops. And this number, so this is PWM and this is encoder and that's now positive. And I'm going to select all and copy that and come over here and call this good Apparently I can't type good ol pulse data.csv. Paste that in there. Again, delete the stuff off the end that I don't want. Delete the stuff off the beginning that I don't want. And then come over here. Change the file name. Eh, apparently I 
called it something slightly different. There we go. And the main thing to see is now I have this pulse that's positive 200 and it stays on for 200 time steps and theta is positive. So I would call that a successful verification that all of my connections are now the same or are now correct. I'm now getting positive theta for positive uh, motor command and I could come back over here um, close the serial monitor, reopen the serial monitor, and the first thing I could do would be to run a, an inverse dead brand calibration. So I type in a one, and depending on your motors and all that, I can actually hear this one whine just a little bit. Basically, it's just going to increment the PWM value and then wait for 10 milliseconds and see if the motor actually moves. And then as soon as it starts to see a change in the encoder, it stops and says, okay, the breakaway in the positive direction was 42, and the breakaway in the negative direction was negative 49. Um, like I said, you may want to, at that point, hard code the answer to that so that you don't have to rerun that every time. And so if you go and find my setup function, um, there is pause break and negative break, which I've got defaulting to positive and negative 60. So you could change those to 42 and negative 49, or maybe if you wanted to be, I don't know if it would be safer to go just a little bit above or a little bit below that. I don't know. Kind of see what your results tell you. Okay. So I now have my inverse dead brand calibrated. I've already showed you how to run an open loop test. I could rerun it with the calibration in place, and that would actually be probably smart. Um, if I was going to do the curve fitting, I would then rerun that open loop test, save that data, and curve fit that. But then I also want to show how to run a proportional control test. And so I tell it the amplitude I want it to stop at. And so I'm just going to say stop at 200. Well, yeah, 200 is fine. And then that's going to ask me for KP, and that can be a floating point number. And so I'm going to go with 3.5 for this particular motor and it ran my test and so I could come over here again and copy that data and get a new CSV file I've already saved some so I'll get a new one and again I'm deleting the stuff off the end that I don't actually want and the stuff off the beginning as well And I could come over here, and I think I already have a um, version of this that is for KP. Yeah. And so there's my new data. And the main thing to see. Um, that's weird. Hmm. I'm not sure what's happening there. I'll have to think about that. Um, but we should see theta eventually settling out near the desired stopping point. And yeah, that's a proportional control test. Similarly, we could run a PD control test and those kind of things. So I think that's enough for you to know how to use the code and run a test and handle this menu and copy and paste data out of um, the serial monitor into a text editor or a spreadsheet and run tests that way. Let me know if you have any questions.